In doing research for a video to make today, I see a lot of people are really enamored with this idea of making $100 a day. So let's see if we can create a strategy to accomplish that. First, let's handle a couple of administrative questions. If the goal here is to make $100 a day, I'm going to take that as day trading. We're going to be making a day trading strategy. And second, I'm going to consider $5,000 a small account size. Of course, you can slide your expectations based on your own size. So if you're trading a $2,500 account, maybe you can expect to make something like $50 a day with a strategy like this. We'll see. Let's go ahead and jump into the strategy creation. Alrighty, so I don't want to bore all of you all with the actual coding, but here is the Think Script running. If you don't know, we are using the Thinkorswim platform. They have their own proprietary language called Think Script, in which you can create automated backtest strategies that will simulate where, based on conditions that you give the strategy, a trade would enter and exit so that you can automatically gather those backtested statistics and look to translate them into real life. Anyway, all we're doing with this strategy is we're looking at buying when the RSI crosses above 70, selling when the RSI crosses below 40, and of course, we are taking $5,000 in position size as we talked about. This is a strategy that I know tends to work pretty well, at least not a, maybe a full strategy, but an idea of utilizing the RSI in this way that I know tends to work pretty well. So let's, let's go ahead and give it a try. If I name the strategy uh, 100 a day, oh, it can't start with a digit, okay? 100 a day, okay. Uh, let me also go ahead and before I turn this on, I haven't even hit go on this thing yet. So I have no idea if this is actually going to work or not. Let's turn on the floating PL and let's also actually go ahead and turn on an RSI with a 70 overbought and a 40 oversold. If I go ahead and hit apply, we're on the Tesla daily chart here on the Tesla daily chart tends to work pretty well. Of course, Tesla's gone straight up. You can plug any any bullish strategy on Tesla should make money. We know this chart is strong, right? But let's now dive into some more intraday stuff. And going into intraday charts will actually give us a little bit of a better sort of well-rounded result because Tesla does a lot more up and down sort of recently on this choppy kind of market than it has on its total daily chart. So if I jump into the five-day, or sorry, the five-minute chart, over the last 180 days, you will see the strategy is actually only up $292. Let me actually do one more thing. I also have my own custom coded backtest data that doesn't, I'm not going to lie, this doesn't work perfectly, but it works well enough to give us an idea of how our strategy is working. So our current strategy only up $292 in 180 days. That's not profitable. I would not call that a profitable strategy. 35% win rate. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a tweak. I've got already an immediate idea for a tweak I want to try in this. So first off, I'm going to input MA length as uh, 200, and then I'm going to plot, sorry, a uh, MA, and it's going to be a simple moving average with the length set to that MA length input that we entered. And we are now also only going to buy if the closing price is greater than that 200 simple length moving average. Does that make sense? So still, if the RSI crosses above 70, but now if also the price is above the 200 SMA. If I go ahead and hit apply on this, okay, we're we're up a little bit more money. We're now up $434, but over 180 days, still wouldn't call that a uh, profitable strategy. And it's got a 37% win rate. Okay, we're digging, we're trying, this is what you do. And, and you guys are seeing, and I'm showing you this, I'm gonna show you the process because this is the beauty of, of using code to backtest, right? You can try something. It just simulated, on the last one, it simulated 100 trades. This time, it simulated 92 trades. In like 30 seconds there, we just got 192 simulated trades, and we can continue to tweak this and automatically gather this data. Could you imagine how long it would take if you had to go gather those 100 trades, change something, 
gather another 92 trades. It would take you it would take you hours and hours just to gather the data that it took us a minute to do with code. I'm going to go ahead and mess around with a few more things offline. I'll jump back here in a sec. So I've pretty much kept the strategy the same, except now I have implemented a short into the same strategy and with the same sort of idea. First off, I did change the buy RSI value to 85 from 70, making it, you know, need to show a little bit more strength before we enter the trade. Now, I also have a short if the RSI crosses below 25 and if the close is below that 200 simple moving average. And we're going to cover that short if the RSI crosses above 50. Of course, got our add order functions down here. So the computer actually will simulate the orders. And if I go ahead and show you the statistics on this now, last 180 days, still on just 92 trades. So since I made the you know, the the reason why you enter a long above 85, the number of trades actually didn't go up, even though I added a whole nother sort of trade criteria. Still just 92 trades in the last 180 days. We are now up $1,900 on a 47% win rate, $96 average win, $45 average loss on the Tesla five minute chart. Now, I haven't clicked around to any other charts yet, so this is not even like a real back test at all yet. This is just sort of me optimizing for this subset of static data. Now, of course, that means nothing. Anyone can make anything make money on a one subset of static data, right? Now let's go look at some other data sources. In this case, we're going to go look at some other tickers and see how the strategy works. Uh, first off, just some other kind of big name stocks. I'll look at Apple. Okay. Immediately on Apple, not making money down a hundred bucks on NVIDIA. We are up 1200 bucks on a 46% win rate. Okay. On SPY or the S&P 500 ETF, down 230 bucks on a 32% win rate. Okay. Um, on Micron, up $317, 49% win rate. On AMD, we are up $1,100 on a 45% win rate. I, okay. So, so you know, it, it looks like I, I wouldn't exactly call this strategy profitable. It, I, I think on the stocks that we have looked at, it would definitely be up. Though those stocks that it is red on, it is smaller red than the stocks it's green on. But we still want to see more consistency across multiple different tickers than what we're looking at. So let me go back in the lab. Let me adjust some more things. Once again, I want to show you all this. And maybe this is a dumb video idea. Feel free to let me know. But I think it's it's good to show you all kind of the steps I'm taking in developing a strategy. I've never really done that before. Normally, I just show you a strategy, show you the results. Here you go. This video, you're kind of getting to see the grind, see the process, see how we do it, learn some of uh, kind of what I'm thinking when I'm running these quick back tests and those sort of things. So anyway, shut up, Trey. I'll be back in a second with some more uh, updated code. You know, during this round of development, I had a little bit of an epiphany. If we're trying to make $100 a day on a $5,000 account, we are looking to average 2% profit a day. We're not likely to find that kind of volatility on big name stocks like we've been testing, like Tesla, Apple, JP Morgan. Today was kind of a crazy day for Tesla, and it's up 1.5%. So what I did, I built a scanner. We are now looking for stocks between 5 million and 200 million market cap that have traded over four times their average volume, that are trading heavy volume. If we look at some of the stocks on this list, we've got AEON. We are still running our strategy. If I go ahead actually and open this, show you a couple of changes I maybe did make to the strategy now. Well, first, first things first, let me point out the obvious. I got rid of the uh, short entrance. When you're trading lower float stocks like this, they're either not available to borrow short or the short fees are very expensive. So I just cut all of that worry out of this test. We are no longer shorting with this strategy back to only longing strong RSIs. I changed the MA length to 50 to a faster moving average length as we are going to now be trading faster moving stocks. And a very important thing I did, and this is, this is vital 
vital when you set up a scanner and when you're going to make a strategy built around a scanner, you need to make sure that the strategy is also only trading stocks that would be on that scanner. So I've defined an, a variable called VC here, which takes the daily volume or, or looks for, sorry, I should say, returns true if the daily volume is greater than the average volume of the last 14 days times four. These are the stocks that will show up on the scanner. I then, of course, also put that in the buy condition. It also needs to be and VC needs to return true. So it will only enter a stock if it would also be on that scanner because you don't want the strategy to cheat. You don't want to build a scanner that says, return me strong stocks and then run a strategy blindly against that. Because of course, then the strategy is going to look good, right? Because you're only testing it on strong stocks. So this is a vital, vital step in building statistically proven strategic strat strategic strategies. I systematic strategies, I think is what I was going for. Make sure that you have this built into your strategy if building around a scanner. Um what else did I change? The RSI value is now crosses above 60. I think I lowered that down once again since we're trading faster moving stocks. Close, still over that 50 moving average once again and VC. And I have the RSI. Oh, here's something else I changed. The RSI stop below 40 or or we now have a take profit if the RSI crosses above 85 or, and I also realized this, this was just me forgetting a step before when building a day trading strategy, you also want to make sure that you are exiting the stock at the end of the day. So I use the seconds till time function, 1555 or obviously five minutes before market close. If that is, if it's that time, essentially exit the trade. And then also I added onto the buy condition, the RSI must be below 85. That's actually a really nice check. That's a check I like to build into my strategy. Sorry, I keep looking over. I feel like I'm ranting a little bit about the strategy here, but hopefully you all that are still in the video are enjoying this conversation and my thought process behind how I build strategies. This video is uh, getting a little bit more away from how do we make $100 a day to, hey, how do we actually build profitable strategies? But teach a man to fish, right? Hopefully that's why most of you are here. So um, anyway, this is a really good check I like to build in. Uh, the, uh, have, a, have a profit target, right? Have a take profit and build into your buy condition that you don't enter if that take profit is true. Let me show you an example of where this is a very nice catch. BuzzFeed, uh, BZFD, oh here, is actually number two on my on my scanner right now. If I go to it, you will see that the BuzzFeed like had a huge move, a massive move out of open and then died. Well, the strategy without that catch would have entered here and then had an awful rest of the day. But because this move was so big, the RSI value is 91. Since we have that profit catch, it also acts as a, hey, if the stock makes too big of a move, let's not chase the crap out of it, right? So that's a really nice look there on BuzzFeed. Let's continue to look down the scanner at some other stocks. Oh, I want to touch on one more thing. And I, I promise this is the last kind of tactical statistics I'm going to talk about. Then we're going to look at the money. Um, I have my volume sorted by a custom column here that I created called volume yesterday, where you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. And I've actually made this mistake at the beginning of my system trading journey. When you build a scanner like this based off of the, you know, moving average volume and you look at it based off of the volume today, you're going to get a lot of misrepresentation because on the volume today, you're going to get a, a lot of really strong stocks. Hey, TKLF, Traded a ton of volume today. Strategy made a little bit of money on it. Well, it about broke even, but still. Hey, Silo traded a ton of volume today. Strategy made, uh, once again, a little bit of money on it. But these are just very strong stocks because of the volume they're trading today. We are basing our look off of the average volume from yesterday. So we should be basing our scans and the stocks that we're looking at because this is what the scanner would look like at the beginning of the day on the volume of yesterday. 
Does any of that make sense? I, I, sorry, I feel like I'm ranting here a little bit, but I'm trying to explain this as easily as I can. Just, I build a lot of checks. I build a lot of checks into my both my scanners and my strategies so that they don't cheat. Because it's very easy, it's very easy to accidentally even cheat a strategy. Oh my gosh, look at how profitable this is. But because of things like I've covered by, you know, not having the strategy only take trades if it would have shown up on the scanner. By sorting the scanner based on today's volume, even though it's the end of the day and you would have been looking at the volume at the beginning of the day. Things like that can really mess up your back test and make a strategy look profitable when it really isn't. So let's go ahead now. Let's get to the fun stuff. I'll stop yapping. A E O N. Oh, now why is the floating PL not loading? One second. I've got like so much going on. Sometimes it just breaks. Come on, just work. Thank you. A E O N. Took a couple of trades. And remember, all of these trades would have taken. Remember, on the strategy, we have it set to only trade if the volume average is 4x or if the volume is 4x average, right? So these trades would have been taken. AEON up $3,000 today, got in at 291, would have got out at the end of the day at 290. So a break even trade today. But um, if I go to SISI, the next stock on the scanner, um, this stock is on the scanner because it's quite weak with volume, but um, did get in today at 116. Actually, we'll get out at the end of the day at 109. So a bit of a loss there. Of course, you're not going to win every single one. WLDS, um, also a loss in today at 45 cents out at 44 cents, but you do see the strategy's up $2,800. Ah, there was a massive move on WLDS here a few days ago. If we go look at the daily, yep, this move here on the daily on this very heavy volume, uh, the strategy did trade it on that day and make a lot of money. If I look at TXTM, okay, there's some very ugly stocks on here too. So uh, let's look at CDT. Uh, CDT is down. Find me. <clears throat> oh, but CDT is up $4,200 once again on some previous trading. Yep. Capitalized on a big move back here on CDT in the past. I would like to find like one more trade that was taken today. A lot of the stocks that are popping up on the scanner are just kind of ugly, which that's going to happen a lot when you're looking at low float stocks. Here's a really nice one. NAAS got in today at $3 when the RSI crossed above 80, held until the end of the day will get out at close at 465. Very, very nice win there. So uh, you're seeing you're seeing now some very nice wins. And now, did you see a couple of big losses in there too? Yes, you did. But do I think with a strategy like this, you could, and, and I should say with the strategy and scanner, because the scanner might even be more important than the strategy in this case, returning the right kind of stocks to look for this RSI continuation on could you average $100 a day with a strategy like this on a $5,000 account? I believe you could. Once again, long, kind of drawn out video. I, I want to say I apologize, but, but I mean, I don't. Hopefully, those of you that are still here enjoyed the in-depth in depth conversation we just had about what goes on in my mind when I'm building scanners, when I'm building strategies related to those scanners, how I make sure that neither my scanner or my strategy is cheating its back-tested results. Because of course, you don't want to just have a back test that makes a ton of money that doesn't translate to real life, right? So hopefully a lot of you all uh, enjoyed this conversation, learned something about how I use RSI and a couple of the catches we talked about along the way, as well as the uh, RSI and volume and moving average all combined to make money in a small account. This was a long one. Those of you all that made it to the end of it, thank you. You all are troopers. You all are obviously interested in this codified trading strategies and scanners. Well, I have over 40 different, be it strategies, custom indicator scanners, all available to download on my website, daytradingstrategies.net. And those of you all that made it to the end of this video, going to give you a little bit of an extra bonus. I want to give you guys that push to move towards systematic trading, which turned me into a profitable trader. If you use coupon code END at checkout, you're going to get your first month for only $15. You can sign up, download all the codes. Of course, I am always weekly updating and adding new codes, but if at any time you would like to cancel, feel free to do so easily under the My Account tab as well. So don't feel locked in. Once again, daytradingstrategies.net. There'll be a link in the description down below this video. Use discount code END and become a better trader today. Trading stocks.
He talks about trading stocks. It's important for you Americans and other international individuals to learn about stocks. <laughs>